What is your fake it till you make it story? My entire professional career, I played with computers growing up in so far as I knew how to turn one on, download a game, and play them very well. I knew next to nothing about building them, or troubleshooting them, usually depending on my friends to help when my second hand PC threw a it fit. Cut to me. Fresh out of college with a waste of paper degree looking for a job. I get hired by an IT contractor. Cause I knew a gal that knew a guy. With the understanding I needed to know the basics. I didn't know it. I made it up as I went along. Googling the living it out everything. That was 10 years ago. I'm now a systems administrator. I taught a class on a specialty software program. I was learning the software myself and I was literally one class ahead of the people I was teaching. I was desperate for a job several years back so I wrote up this resume that was utter horsed on a whim granted some of it was legit but a good 80% was me bulleting. Amazingly enough I got a call for an interview and by some miracle they ended up hiring me and I worked for the place for 7 years before something I was actually qualified for opened up at another workplace. That bullet resume saved me from ruin though so I always will look back in that crazy situation fondly. My piece of a draggy brother-in-law used to lie and said he had heavy equipment operator experience. He'd get the job and get fire W in a day or two but pick up something small. Did that 15 or 20 times and kept moving around until he learned enough to not get fired. My business started by me just saying yes I can do that. I can supply that for you. I had no idea that they would be willing to hear me out. 5 years later and I'm now supplying desks and office equipment to over 120 offices in London. You really can go far if you just say yes. Last weekend I was at a wedding dance and they played the jit up. No one knew the dance. Including myself. But liquid encouragement kicked in and I'll lead the entire wedding dance. 50 plus people. In a dance that I completely made up on the spot. Everyone was so impressed after that I knew all of the moves. That I didn't tell anyone any different. Edit. Thanks for the silver. My first. Cheers. I had this file thing in elementary school where you have to put all your worksheets in a folder and my teacher will check it at the end of the year. Well. I did not do it and convinced her that I handed in but she lost it. She said she will get back to me. And I'm still waiting. A while ago I decided to stop complaining about environmental destruction. Climate change. ETC and ACT. So I started planting trees. Keep in mind I had no training in this. I never even gardened before. I considered myself a brown thumb. I researched how to do it and it seemed pretty easy. But everything died. I'd plant a tree exactly how they said. But it wouldn't survive. I had to baby them so much. Just to get them through their first year. And maybe half would make it. But I just kept planting and planting and faking I knew what I was doing. Then I came across stuff by DR. L.A. Ningham on soil science and it kind of changed everything for me. It made a whole lot of sense. Ecosystems transition from deadland. To weed pit. To grassland. To brushland to forest. As they do. The soil microbiology changes from dead soil to bacterial dominated soil. To fungal dominated soil. So the correct way to plant trees is actually to transition the soil to forest soil as fast as possible. Nature takes thousands of years of weeds dying. And then grasses dying and soil life building and building. To a small woody shrub. Which then eventually dies. And now it changes. Now everything changes. Woody material on the ground means fungus can't move in. It's game over at this point. And you will transition to a forest now. So the correct way to plant a tree is to speed yourself to this point by dropping wood chips on the ground and letting the soil chemistry change. After a few months, or even better, a year, now plant your trees into the environment they want to live in. Well that changed everything. And now I go around planting mini starting forests everywhere on my land. In wild places. Abandoned lots. ETC. I've seen little pockets of life I've planted turn from a few trees to a small thicket. At this point, it's unstoppable and the land heals. It's an incredibly rewarding hobby, but one you must take very seriously. Anytime you plant something, you set in motion wheels of change. So you must know what you are planting. For this reason I stick to local native trees, shrubs, herbs, flowers, 
things that exist all around me. That's good for many reasons. The least of which isn't free genetic material. Seeds. To make this hobby 100% free. What is really rewarding though is driving to work and seeing a bird perched on an apple tree that I planted. In a cluster of life with bees buzzing around the apple. Hascap and lovage and borage and strawberries and asparagus. Clover. Fruit tree guild. Looking and seeing apple saplings bursting up through the sweet sicily. The ecosystem has its foothold in now. And will replicate itself. Sequestering carbon and healing the soil long after I'm gone. So I started as someone who considered themself a brown thumb. And with a little action and knowledge seeking, I now have pockets of life all around my community that are expanding and growing. That I was the catalyst for creating. That's a legacy right there. And that's how we reverse climate change and give our children a world worth living in. I started at a big ol' multinational in retail as a college dropout. I started at the lowest rung of customer service in a store. Now retail has lots and lots of staff turnover. And a multinational has a written of rules. You'd expect them to have. Also, I'm not the dumbest around. Never mind the college dropout that's another story. And well to be fair not everyone in retail is super smart. So there was a consistent lack of management. Or they didn't care. And all the rules and regulations had gaps in them. So people start asking questions. How do I solve this? What should I do next? Etc. Nobody had an answer to this questions. So I started answering them using common sense or what I'd think should work. Just filling the gaps which probably made me look a lot smarter than I am. Just faking that I knew what I was doing. So I started climbing the ladders and I am now the senior finance and operations director for a store with a gross turnover of over 160 million euros. However, cracks are starting to show. The company got a lot more serious and I'm surrounded by smart people with high degrees where I can't bluff my way through problems and meetings as easily. So, I'm thinking of taking a step back and relaxing a bit more on lower position. I was a lot happier then and had way less stress and way less hours. TLDR. Faking works until it doesn't. I dropped out of high school in 10th grade. I hated school with a passion. I did get to get. I started working retail and found I really liked managing projects and eventually people. I ended up leaving retail for a call center job in a fairly large company. Within 4 years I was running a marketing division. I had no fine clue what marketing was or anything. I'm just good at getting people to trust me and I'm very creative. I got bored there and somehow got myself into another marketing role at an even bigger company. Five years later I'm the CMO. I still really don't know it about traditional school taught marketing. I literally faked it till I made it. I'm very good at what I do. During college, I worked part time as a deli clerk in a grocery store. I had zero experience with deli items, didn't know head cheese from salami, or provolone from Munster. So, I'd explain to customers that I was new and ask them to point to items in the case that they wanted and what the sign indicated for the price per pound. They always seemed happy to help out, especially when I gave them free samples from the slicing machine. Sleeping. I fake trying to do it till I'm surprised by the real thing. I'm an artist who works in the film industry. Some years ago my wife got pregnant purposefully, and I had to try to find a way to make more reliable income while she was on mad leave and for the foreseeable future, as we knew we weren't only having one. I also wanted to stay in film. I got work as a grip, grunt work lugging things around set and building setting up large bits of lighting gear. No clue what I was doing. I started off on big shows like The Flash and Arrow. A friend got me work on a small set and only 13 days into working as a grip. Which I didn't tell them. They made me the key grip. Key is film talk for manager. I was in charge of a whole department which is one half of the lighting team. Faked it until I made it. Fast forward over 5 years. I have over 30 credits to my name as a key grip. I own an entire 5 ton trucks worth of gear that I rent out. Which makes as much money per show as my wage did. My wife is back at work after having two kids and I'm a stay at home dad with consistent passive income and the time to continue to write and audition whenever I need. Social anxiety. I was always the quiet guy up until a few years ago. 
I decided I was tired of not having friends and I started faking confidence and talking to everyone. In the beginning I was dying inside and felt like I was walking on glass. Now I don't know when to shut up and can talk to just about anyone. When I was younger, I used to randomly apply for jobs out of curiosity. Worked at a ton of places. Junkyard. Machine shop. Security at a porn store. ETC. Well. One job I applied for was an analytical position at a small insurance company. I have absolutely zero experience in any office setting except a call center. And was not qualified for the job at all. I resume was 100% lies. I even made up the name of the college. Well. They hired me. The place was so disorganized that I essentially just kind of talked my way into it. The people interviewing me didn't even all know what position it was for. They paid me $60,000 a year. Three times what I had ever made. I was 19 and absolutely rolling in money. I even had a little office. I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing. So I just kind of flew under the radar. My parents thought it was hilarious. I was literally making as much money as my dad. Who was a metallurgical engineer. Unfortunately it didn't last long. A larger company bought us out. Mined the company. And fired everyone. I stole a couple laptops on my way out. One of the guys I worked with talked someone into giving him one of the company cars. A super nice BMW. I'm painfully shy and ducking terrified of speaking in front of people. A few years ago I started volunteering at my local animal shelter and would always sign up for a time slot before the shelter opened to the public so I wouldn't have to deal with people. I kept getting assigned new volunteers to show them the ropes because my time slot was when it was quiet and there wouldn't be interruptions. I really extremely didn't want to deal with people. But I went ahead anyway because it meant I got my own kennel key. I was nervous as hell and didn't know what I was doing but plowed ahead anyway. Then I got the hang of it. Now, four years later, I'm one of the leads. I have access to restricted areas of the shelter. I'm one of only two volunteers allowed to update the animals notes on the shelter site. And I'm highly respected and considered a role model. I'm still terrified. Proud. But terrified. Honestly, I felt like this for most of my jobs in the IT industry. I work on Cisco voice systems and it always seemed like I was getting jobs that were just a bit higher technical level than I was at. So I was constantly working hard to learn what I didn't know to get to the level that I was supposed to be at. Or they would have one of the Cisco voice platforms that I wasn't familiar with but expected me to troubleshoot and work on. Such as my current job which has Ux, call center stuff, and I'd never worked on anything but UCCX. Which is a very slimmed down version of Ux and is very different. So now I'm working hard to learn Ux but I'm always feeling like at any time they'll realize they can get someone better and replace me. Not even going to lie. I used to trace other people's art so often as a young artist. Like 8-10. But now. I have that guidance of technique with me when I create my own pieces. Not me. But my cousin applied for a brand new restaurant job and didn't get it. Her friend got the job and she was pissed she didn't get hired. So her friend told her where when orientation was. And she decided to fake getting hired till she made it. She went to orientation. All the training. Introduced herself to all the staff. Management. And made her presence known. After a couple of weeks working. Everyone got their paychecks. Except her. She went up to management. And was like WTH. Everyone got paid but me. You've seen me working for the last two weeks. Management goes into the computer system and checks that's so weird you're not in the system. I'm so sorry. Must be a clerical error. We will get you in the system. And paid right away. And that's how my cousin fake got hired till she made it. I wanna be like her when I grow up. Was told that in order to get sober I needed to find a church and start going regularly. I picked a church. Went to every service. Sat in the front row and sang along with all the hymns. After about two months of regular attendance. The priest asked if I wanted to take over the Sunday school class. I politely declined. I managed to convince a priest I was Christian enough to take over a Sunday school class but it was still more than another year until I could get stay sober. Without church. I George Costanzaed my way into a job in high school. I was looking for a new job and went to apply at a local movie theater. The general manager asked to interview me on the spot. 
which I wasn't at all prepared for, but went with it anyway. This was like a Wednesday or Thursday night. The interview went well, and she told me she was going to be out of town this weekend, but she would let me know on Monday. I didn't want to wait, so the next day at school I got my work permit filled out and took it back. I dropped it off to another manager and told them she told me to bring this crap in. They asked if I could start the next day. I ended up working there for over 3 years. My co-worker has a degree in mechanical engineering in another country but was lucky to get a job in the US helping to fix the Y2K bug. He was told to search for codes and software and edit it a certain way. He was so out of his league that when he made a mistake that he couldn't just backspace to fix he would accidentally turn off the computer to restart it, just because he didn't know how to undo edits. He's now our lead Java developer. My undergrad major required a senior project. The honors college program I was in also required a senior project, because my major was a pretty common one. The major in the honors college allowed students in my major to combine and do one project instead of two. The project for my major required 400 hours of work participation with a mentor, and the presentation of the final project. I was also required to present my project in two public forums in order to graduate. Not only did I not get the hours needed, but I also just didn't present my project anywhere, because I was split between my major and honors college. I don't think anyone took responsibility for me, and I graduated no problem. Still my best act of mediocrity to date. Graduate school, doctoral program. Anyone who has endured this pain understands that the transition from undergraduate to graduate training can be very much intimidating and illicit imposter syndrome. Everyone in my cohort was faking it till making it. But in that process of stress and class and practica and comps and writing and research and teaching and learning, you eventually make it. But it's rich getting there. And every day early on feels pretty fake. Just gotta get your mental health right. Get your physical health right. Get your social support right. Make sure to keep your hobbies up. Try to research something you're marginally actually interested in. Establish good relationships with faculty, your cohort, your pi, etc. Trust in your self-efficacy. Keep grinding, faking it, and doing the best you can, until you come out the other side all the wiser for it. The competency and confidence will come, but not without the sacrifice of anxiety and time put in. A lot of people think doctoral programs are about intelligence. Sure, to some extent, but not nearly as much as people think. It's really about persistence, determination, commitment, resilience, and grit. The process will test you, and break you, but you will grow, and you can succeed. Recovering from some mental health issues. I had a really hard time around people, constantly questioning myself and their behavior towards me but I just forced myself to believe the best and kept pressing on. I found friends that way and great stories. Currently living in a third world country after being in first world my entire life. I'm 16. Gonna fake that I'm happy here till we make it fellas. Edit. I sorta wanna start a rich channel about my travels and what living in a third world and one of the world's most dangerous countries is really like. What do you guys think? I was on the stage for a hypnotist and didn't get hypnotized but I decided to go along with it. I invented every higher up position I've had. Up till now. Started in call center. Went to OM and said I'd like to help with the Christmas party. Hung out with admin assistants on off time to plan. But it led to them doing other things also and me watching. Asking questions. Went back to OM and said. I've learned how to do blank. Can I do blank? What if I combined blank and blank? Created incentive program. Went back to OM and showed my work. Became in charge of that and was given a planning committee for any event contest employee morale. Half the time I didn't know what I was doing. But just by being sneaky I figured out how to create things they needed. This is just an example. I've done it with 3 jobs and have gotten awesome experiences. College. And pay from just bugging people because I'm bored. Honestly. Being happy and social. Going into high school I was in a super bad place. I was treated very poorly throughout elementary and middle school. And essentially was a social outcast for a long while. In order to make friends I faked being a social and outgoing person since I had a fresh start with different people. 
Now that's actually the way I am. Very social and friendly, and willing to talk to anyone. It's tricky to come out of that shell but you get there eventually. Well, when I was 16 I managed to fake being sick well enough to fool a doctor. It was end of the year. Finals week. I had failed 3 classes and was at risk of failing philosophy too. Day of the exam arrives. I wake up late and start to panic. As I run to school I'm already making up a story about how I woke up feeling sick. The usual stuff. They say I can only do the exam if I show up with a doctor's note on the same day. Instead of panicking even harder. I don't even go home and instead walk straight to a kind of mini hospital. I don't know what to call it in English. Sorry. Close to home. I get there after 1h of walking and find out I can only see a doctor for free if I have a partner card. Which I didn't have. After another 2 hours to get home. Getting the documents and making a partner card. I wait another 1h in line to get to see a doctor. When my turn arrived. I had already crafted. What I thought was. A master level narrative of how I woke up with explosive diarrhea. Possibly from eating at a itty burger place the night before. As it's not so easy to verify. And is mild enough that I didn't have to appear like I was dying for her to believe me. It wasn't hard to fake a sick looking face. I'm very scrawny and hadn't eaten all day at that point. She even measured my blood pressure and confirmed it was awfully low. In the end. She gave me the note. Prescribed some medicine and I did the exam two days later. Passed all the other classes as well. Still one of my proudest moments. Went from hospital or tea at a casino to an engineer by faking my resume. I had general electrical knowledge but that's it. Within 6 months got promoted and left to a higher paying job where I constantly feel like the least experienced engineer telling my engineers how to do their job. Granted I studied a lot but my old chief engineer said I was like Leonardo DiCaprio in Catch Me If You Can. Edit. Since people got upset about me using the title engineer I'll clarify. I repaired heavy machinery and agree technician would have been a better title. But engineer was the title I was given when I started there. So that's the title I used. I started a business when I was 17. That was 12 years ago. In another city. Still going and have progressed and improved. Comma still working on it. Trying to fake being a billionaire. No success yet. Will report back when I buy Reddit. My brother's resume looks good and bad in a way. He's had 9 jobs in 12 years. He's only been let go once but he gets tired of jobs fast and the second he hears he can earn more he just goes for it. I told him it looks horrible to have that many jobs in that many years etc. But he's managed well. Working. I can totally make results but all the time while I'm at it. It is a faking in action. Almost a decade ago. I was banging drugs and ended up in an induced coma. To save my heart. After coming out of a coma. I was still addicted to the drugs and needles but deadly afraid of doing it again. For fear of finally dying. I asked doctors, family, anyone who visited me, how I could overcome the addiction because I didn't want to go back to that lifestyle. One buddy just said fake it until you make it. It just clicked and resonated with me. I lied to myself and everyone that I was afraid of needles and hated the drug I was doing. I kept on until one day I woke up legitimately afraid of needles. I was still in the hospital for all of this though. I was mostly lucky to be held and detoxed before release. The phrase has continued to help in a time I'm at a low though. 9 years sober in 3 weeks. I started as a saleswoman at a small paper company. I got myself promoted to office manager simply by saying I was. I work in IT. Google baby. When I was 10, I lost my right leg in a tricycle accident. I spent 1 year limping with a crutch. Doctors said my leg will never grow back. So I decided. I'm just going to assume I have two legs and fake it till I make it. I admit. I felt like. Every day. Flat on my face. Few visits to ER. But. My leg eventually just grew back. Did it. Typo. A few years ago. My class had to write an essay about an important moment in our lives and read it in front of the whole class. When it was my friend's turn. He went up and did his speech. Like normal. The teacher asked him to turn it in. And he said he didn't have it. Turns out that he never wrote one and just made it up on the spot. 
I was desperate for a job and acted like I had 6 years experience in low voltage and IT work. I YouTubed a ritload of stuff and went out my first week with a gentleman then they sent me out on my own. He felt comfortable that I knew what I was doing. I now have 4 years of actual low voltage work and still do it to this day. Making a ritload of money now too. No college degree. No experience except in completely different industries. It really goes to show how much you can bullet your way into anything. Now I will say I'm pretty sure one of the veteran guys knew that I was winging it as he helped all the time over the phone with troubleshooting and whatnot, and he never said anything to management. In the end my thought process was what's the worst that's going to happen? They figure out I don't know it and fire me. I'm embarrassed for a few minutes as I walk out the door and never see any of them again so who cares? I suppose since they are somewhat reputable they could have warned other employers but at the time not being able to pay rent or afford food I didn't give a rit. I knew of a guy that got a big inheritance from his dad in real estate. He just kept starting business that would fail and would say it was the best ever. Then he became president of the United States through total bulleting. I like the question. But I don't have an answer. So here take my upvote. Literally living. I had a child pass away from SIDS at 9 days old. I could not cope and wanted to kill myself. But had two special needs children that I was raising by myself. I loved my other two children so much though and I couldn't bring myself to leave them and be so selfish. I decided I would just count down the days until I died naturally while not actively preventing it. I began saving any and all money I could to make sure my kids would be taken care of. And everything else was just going through the motions. I acted like everything was fine and I was fine. But in reality I just didn't care about anything. Nobody wants to hear a sob story. And no amount of talking or hearing anything people would say to me would bring my child back. So I didn't see the point in any of it. I've now survived 10 years after he died. And I've noticed myself enjoying life again. Just little things at first. But I really noticed the change when I would get excited about new stages in my life. Or actually started planning things for the future. It may have taken me 10 years. But I faked it for so long and now feel like I am finally making it. You just gestured to all of me. Being smart. I do admit I like knowing and I like thinking but all my knowledge is surface knowledge and very superficial. I usually hang out with older people and I don't always understand or comprehend what they are saying so I usually just shut up. Then say something that I heard one time about the topic or ask a question. And at school, I just mention random facts or trivia about the subject and now everyone I know actually thinks I am smart. Coding software development. Took a bunch of IT certifications. Learned some basics. Did good at interviews. Now I kinda know how to code HTML, CSS, JavaScript, SQL and a little bit more. Doubled my salary with zero background in coding tech.